Hello everyone, thanks for watching this video. This video, what I'm going to be showing you today is an, a, it's a demonstration of a project that I've been working in the last couple of days. So uh, this, this project uses um, Azure IoT Edge to do some custom trained module for image processing. And what I have done is I have image processed in the camera feed from the Alfresco to see if there's any presence in Alfresco or not. And I've then, then I've used that in my smart home engine, which is the home assistant. Um, I'm using that information in there to make some intelligent decision making. And this whole um, project is, is about making that intelligence better. And um, I'm going to be explaining you what I did and why I did that in this way and etc. in this video. So uh, first of all, why I did it in this way is I have Alfresco Music configured. And um, all what I wanted to do is if there's motion in the Alfresco, turn on music play. And then if there's no one in the Alfresco, then turn off the music. But what happened was like when there's... I have a motion sensor in there and the motion sensor it, when it's when it's active it works fine and uh, if i if i sit there for for a bit of a long time the motion sensor goes inactive and the and the music stops and i don't want to be running the music for a long time if there's no one actually there then it should be turning off um, but if i sit there idle then it, it just turns off the music as well so I wanted to do uh, some image processing there and then make sure that there's no one in, when there's no motion, there's no one there and then turn off the music. So um, I used, uh, first of all, before I get this to the custom vision or custom train module, I used an object detection module to, to get that camera feed from the Alfresco and then see if there's anyone sitting there. Uh, it worked okay, but it, the accuracy of that wasn't that great. So that's the reason why I had to go with a custom train module. And that's why I ended up in this picture here. So uh, what I did was I, I used the Azure IoT platform for, uh, to achieve this. And um, what I did was I took a series of images of, um, of from this Alfresco camera. I uploaded that into the custom vision. Um, uh, which is customvision.ai. It's a it's it's a platform that allows you to train your um, modules, and then you can export and download the module. So I exported, I trained the module um, with a lot of images, and then I exported the uh, the module as a container. And then I had this developer machine where which I normally use for development. I I did a um, I did a solution for IoT Edge, and I imported that module there. And I also wrote another custom module, which is my image processor. So the classifier module uh, is the one that I used uh, with the container that's exported out of this custom vision. I used that as a classifier. And then the image processor is the one that I, I programmed to, to interact with the classifier and then send the response to the home assistant. So I developed those. Um, those images or the modules and then I ran it that in the IoT simulator first tested it out once it's working then I pushed um, pushed out actually I normally pushed it out to the anyway to the Azure container registry during my testing as well and then once I pushed it out to the container registry uh, when, when, once I'm ready to do the deployment I pushed it out to the actual device so in my case it was uh, Nvidia Jetson Nano and I use this in the Raspberry Pi as well that's no problem with that as um, as well uh, this uh, it's just the Nvidia Jetson Nano gives you more horsepower or more compute power for the image processing side of things that's that's a little bit better uh, suited for the requirement so I have installed um, IoT Edge runtime on the Jetson Nano as well, and then I loaded the modules into that. And then how these modules work is this image processor first um, gets the image from um, like a, a frame from the camera, um, and then it sends that uh, image into the classifier, get some results uh, out of that picture, um, and then based on that, we are looking at the probability of how much can it be in presence. It updates the sense. It updates the sensor in the home assistant. Um, so home assistant runs all the logics to you know turn on, turn off lights, turn off music in Alfresco and etc. Um, so this one updates via MQTT. It has a sensor to say uh, if there's uh, in, according to the vision if there's anyone presence in Alfresco or not. 
So that's that's why updated by MQTT and all the other ones are HTTP communication. And then once it's all done, then it uh, sends the insights to IoT Hub as well, just accumulated for my information. So that's how the whole um, architecture works. And um, I have tested this uh, today and uh, I'll show you how, how that testing works. Um, let's see. So this is the results of the testing. Um, so what I have, uh, this is this is an introduction of the environment. So this is my alfresco looking and I have music and alfresco and a motion sensor. And then this is the vision, new vision sensor based on the custom module. And these are the results uh, that are out from this um, out from this um, uh, from this module, and this is the probability that it says there's no one there, because, and it's that's why it's 0 0.05. And now I decided to walk into the alfresco. As you can see, this is a live feed uh, from the camera, and I walked in, and then it detected some motion, and it started playing music based on the logics. And um, you will see soon the image will process, and then it will detect the custom module that I trained has detected that there's someone there which is uh, all, all what I expected. Um, you can see here the probability is 0 0.99, which is like almost one, which means it's pretty confident that there's someone there. And, and um, yeah, so you can see that and the probability is that and life is there. So you can see after a while, the mo this motion sensor is turning off because um, there's no motion because I'm sitting down and there's no motion there. So the motion sensor goes off. And ideally the, this, the music should turn off as well. But I have, uh, I have put a logic in there saying like, if the motion is off, um, don't turn off the music if there's presence detected from the image processing module. So that's the way I have done it. And uh, let's see, let's give it a bit of a, a time and then let's see how, how that goes. So I'm just gonna fast forward this. So let's go to um, three minutes. There we go. So uh, in, within two minutes, you can see that, um, I'm running the timer now. So you can see that there's, motion, there's no motion, but the music is still running. That's because I've said, um, if there's any detection in there, just keep on going. Um, so that's that, and that's ideally works fine, right? So that's that's all my, what I wanted to achieve. And um, so if you, if I fast forward this, I will we'll then suddenly decide to walk out from this alfresco and let's see uh, what happens um, afterwards. So I decided to, run, uh, to walk out and then I can see now there's presence uh, or motion sensors triggered there now. And then I then it will then the image processing module after within twenty seconds it will just go inactive. So as you can see, it's it's all inactive at the moment, and motion sensor will also go offline, and then it will turn off the music. So that's that's how the testing was done, and that's how I achieved this um, IoT Edge image custom trained image processing uh, to add some more intelligence to my uh, home decision making. And it works really well and it's a powerful environment. So I'll upload some more videos on how I did that later on. But for now, this is what I achieved and I'm pretty happy with that. And the accuracy of that is it's way higher than, than our object detection module. All right, that's all what I wanted to show you. Thanks everyone and hope you enjoy this.